So when we talk about packaging in InDesign, uh, basically what packaging is, uh, is you're, you're creating a folder with all of the elements that you've used in your project. Uh, in this case, I just picked us random holidays cards from the Brooks family as part of our, uh, part of our book materials. Um, so what you want to do is when you create a package, you're creating something um, for output that you're giving to somebody else. And what tends to happen way too often uh, when we get files as designers is what happens a lot is you're missing fonts or you're missing pictures. Um, generally, those are the two, two big ones. Um, is you're just you're missing elements and then therefore you cannot reproduce like if I was a printer and I got this InDesign file and they didn't include the fonts or they didn't include linked images obviously these would come in you guys have seen it um, they would come in super super pixelated in a preview and then our linked images here <coughs> would show the warnings uh, and then our missing font here would have it obviously has a sort of pink background already but would have you know, that pink highlight that we've all seen when we're missing fonts, which again will mean that none of it will re reproduce properly. The fonts won't print, uh, and then the images will print super, super low res. What ends up happening in Illustrator is um, the fonts don't reproduce like they shouldn't, uh, but you actually don't even get a preview uh, in Illustrator. You just get a blank box with that wireframe X indicating that there is a picture. So in Illustrator, they don't even show your preview. At least they kind of show your preview in, um, in InDesign, which is kind of nice. So you can tell your client, like, oh, yeah, you're missing. If you're missing one of these, you can say, oh, yeah, you're missing. And you can kind of describe them a little bit. Oftentimes, I'll send a client a list of what I'm missing, too. Or even in, in this case, a screenshot of any linked, any linked images that we're missing. So basically, when you package, you're, you're pretty much ensuring that um, – they're not going to be missing anything. And if they are, they can install it, right? So if they don't have the font that this uses, right, if you open it up and it says that there's a font, a font issue, but they've sent you a package, the fonts will be in that folder in the package so that you can at least install them on your machine. Sometimes that can be problematic for companies. Some companies don't like to do that. Like I know the company I used to work for, we didn't install outside fonts. It was just a rule of ours. And it went out with our graphic specs. Anytime we got a new client, um, or a new um, uh, ad house that we were working through. Anytime we're an agency is what I was looking for. Anytime we get a new agency or a new client, we sent them our art specs and how we wanted them to set up everything. Um, and in that spec sheet was outline all fonts. And, you know, so they basically got a list of instructions. Um, so this way, since we were printing such large, large format things, that a lot of times when you scale up, um, when you scale things up, and depending on how people have them exported, uh, you can get weird reproduction issues within the fonts. Um, within the fonts, so we don't even like to install fonts. Or sometimes, like you don't, you never know where people get fonts from. Like you can download fonts from anywhere on the internet, and you never know how they're going to format or how they're going to affect your machine and whatever. So just for that, <coughs> for the sake of that, like that's why you can't generally you can't install fonts on shared machines or like we just didn't want to install some fonts that were either going to carry something weird or um, a lot of times like BMW, like BMW Helvetica, like people that work with that, like you have to actually get that from BMW. So if I had a client that sent me something that was using BMW Helvetica, I have to make sure that they have the proper licensing to use it and then therefore that I can use a license. So if you run into licensing issues so that I can get in trouble and I can get fined or sued or an awesome cease and desist letter, something like that. So this is why... The company I used to work for, just as a general rule, if anything had fonts in it, unless we, if it, if it was missing a font, if we had the font, we just outline it. But if it was missing a font and they're like, oh, we included it in the package, we would be like, nope, outline your font. So we would kick it back anyway. But that's going to vary company to company. So what we're going to do when we package our files, right? So we have this is all finished. We are going to, oops. That always takes me a second to find it. Instead of going to print or save under our file menu, we're going to go to package, which is at the top. I always expect print to be first. Um, we're going to go to package. And then you see we get a ton of options here. 
So this basically gives you a summary. I'll zoom in a little bit. So we have your summary, your fonts, any images, any particular custom colors. Uh, you can manage print settings, uh, any external plugins that you use here. And then here it'll tell you, so this is the summary of the entire publication. Three fonts used, none are missing, none are embedded, none are incomplete, et cetera, et cetera. Here it's telling us that there's, um, there is a minor issue. Um, links and images, four links found, none have been modified, none are missing, none are inaccessible. So um, none are embedded. In that case, everything is fine, but where we're getting that little warning is that three of the images use an RGB color space. So what that can lead to is um, just some color colors being off because uh, you're going to be printing in a CMYK workspace. So when you do that conversion, um, you can have some color shift. Um, and again, with something like this, you know, you might have like this pink might print on a little bit more on the red side or it might print a little bit more on the, I wouldn't say purple, but the, you know, the hues might be a little bit different. You're not going to get like a, a you know, some pinks, let's say, in the in the girls' dresses here that are going to print like purple or anything like that. But you're going to have, you might have some some funky color shift. Um, so generally, what we would do uh, as a designer, I would go back and change, go to my links and just make sure that everything's saved at CMYK and just re-update the links, um, just so that way we don't have any odd color shift things. Or that could be something that you would kick back to a client and say, "Hey, you have RGB images. Like, are we printing as is or what?" And they'll either say yes or no. Um, here. It tells you your colors and inks. So we're using four process inks, obviously our CMYK. And then one spot, which I'm assuming is that reddish, reddish color there. Um, color management system is on. There's no external plugins. Um, tells us about any transparencies, the non-opaque objects, transparencies, and then um, number of documents is one. It's a single page, single page document. Um, so obviously there's no pagination. Pagination is basically page flow, um, how one page flows to another, so we don't have to worry about pagination here. And then let me undo that. There we go. Um, so again, here, it'll give you a more detailed, detailed view of our fonts that are in the document. So it tells you the name of the fonts, the type of the fonts, and then this is a sort of a more advanced things, but generally... Um, there are a couple different types of fonts, uh, true type fonts or open type fonts. Um, depending on your usage, there's arguments that one works better than the other. Um, but they're just both different kinds of font files. So if you ever see, like when you're downloading fonts, if you see uh, TTF or OTF, that's what that stands for, is a true type or an open type font. Um, any status, like if it's missing, um, or if it's protected, if it, it will actually, theoretically, it should find any licensing things. So if we had like a BMW Havetica in here that had like a licensing thing, theoretically, it should show up that it would have like some kind of license information in there. Um, and then if you have a selected font, it'll tell you what current font is selected and where it falls on which page. Uh, and then again, links and images. some more specific information about our links and images, the links, the names, the types, where it appears. Obviously, this is only one page, so it's looking at page one. Um, the status, if it's linked or embedded. And then the ICC profile, uh, which is a print profile. It's embedded on the one that I'm guessing is um, uh, CMYK. So the profile is actually embedded into the, into the document, which is a good thing. Um, and then there's no ICC printing profiles with the RGB because they're RGB colors. And it's going to do the conversion to CMYK. And then I'll go through, I won't go through a crazy amount of these, but um, so here's where we have our color info where it said it uses the four process and then one spot color. So it's using that 1775, which is that red. Uh, and any kind of other info with those colors. So those are your four colors in your one spot. And then any type of print settings that you have embedded in the job um, will fall here. Um, in this case, we don't have any, like this is where we're using um, like those rip stations like we talked about. If you have specific, um, specific print settings that you need um, on a particular file, um, this is where all that information would be 
would be here. I won't go through all of it, but um, <clears throat> so this would be specific to however the company or you are outputting these files. Um, so you would have all of your print setting info here and then any external plugins that were used. Uh, sometimes there's um, external plugins can be like crazy effects. You can buy, you know, you can buy third party effects or you can buy third party um, effects for pictures or graphics, things like that. So that would show up here. In this case, there's nothing. So what we're going to do, we're, uh, we're packaging the entire publication. So that long winded part being said, basically all we're going to do is hit file package, make sure everything's okay. And then we're going to hit package. Oh, now it's saying, cause I just opened it. I haven't changed it. So it's saying that you have to save it before you, before you uh, continue, do you want to save it? Yes. There we go. And then this gives you a spot to save your document. So I'm just going to throw this on my desktop. Um, I'm just going to call it package test. So you're naming your file. And then what it's going to do is it's going to save your InDesign document. And then actually, I'm going to make a new folder here. <coughs> Um, so like a lot of times what I would do is I will make a folder for like an export or a package within my, my client folder and, you know, name it however I find it. This is where your, your filing and naming conventions is up to you, like how you organize your computer. But what I would do is like for this package, if this was, you know, whatever that was, I forgot their name already, Brooks, Brooks Christmas card, I would have like Brooks card package or something like that. I'd put that in its own folder. Um, so I'm just going to create a package folder and then have our package test. InDesign document within this folder. And then when we hit save, this is where you can do any kind of printing instructions. You can have contact info, company info. This is where we would get, in my old job, we would get a lot of, you know, you would have the file name, and then you would have like the contact would be whoever your, your contact or the project is. The company, you know, if this was coming from Intel, any address info, blah, 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 and any particular um, instructions you can include here. You don't have to do this. Obviously, it's optional. Um, so we're going to hit continue. And then now it brings up your folder. So I'm going to go to my desktop. So it creates a folder for you. I'm going to put it in this package folder just so it's not all over the place on the desktop. Um, I'm just going to leave it as this. Again, you can name it whatever you'd like. Um, and then here is where you have your options to include fonts, include linked graphics, um, update graphics and links so if the links have been changed um, to include the latest. Um, and then you can use document hyphenation exceptions, um, include fonts and links from hidden and non-printing content. Um, a lot of times I uncheck that. So that's if there's, you know, if you have stuff in your free space, um, like in your sketch area, um, that's hidden, you cannot include that, obviously. Um, if it's not being used in the document, there's no reason to include that. Or you can if you want to by checking that box. Um, including an InDesign markup file, um, those are very handy um, because sometimes if you can't open up um, the actual InDesign file, you can open up the InDesign markup file. Um, basically, it's sort of like a coded InDesign file um, that, you can, that you can sometimes open. When that ends up happening, um, in my experience, when I would open up the InDesign markup file um, rather than the actual InDesign file, is if I was working in a newer version of InDesign and it was an, a packaged or created an older version of um, of InDesign, I would open that markup file. Um, sometimes a newer version either wouldn't open or would just do some funky things when you open it. So if you open up that markup file, it gives you more options for opening correctly, and then you can save it as an InDesign file in the newer version of InDesign. That makes sense. Nine times out of ten, you can just open up the InDesign file. But saving that markup language file is super handy, just in case there's issues. Again, opening in a newer version of InDesign. And then including a PDF, um, you can either have it include a high quality print. So sometimes you can print directly from a PDF. A lot of times, I would say probably nine times out of ten, um, a printer wants the most native file you can give so that that way if there's any corrections or anything we have to do to it, it's way harder to dig through like a PDF than it is to just go through an InDesign file and see, you know, what, um, uh, what's, what's going on if there's any issues. Um, 
or you can have it be, you know, small as file size, just as a preview. So you can send a, the client a preview. Um, like, let's say for argument's sake, again, with my old company, we were printing such giant print files that if you saved, you know, if you saved a PDF at like high quality print or even press quality, you'd get like a PDF export that was like, you know, sometimes 10 gigs. Um, so they would include a smallest file size um, PDF just as a preview so that we could see what this 40 by 40 feet print is supposed to look like. Um, so I'm going to do our PDF preset. We're going to include a PDF, smallest file size, and then again, any instructions, I'm not going to click it, any extra instructions you want to include. Um, you could also check or uncheck a report um, as it is done exporting. It can show you a little report of success or failures. If you get any errors, it should tell you anyway. And then lastly, we're going to hit package. No, and then this is just a standard restrictions apply to copying font software, blah, 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 blah. So this is talking about that, like if you're using fonts that, that have any, um, um, that have any copyright or any licensing issues. This is basically just telling you that that whole distributing or distributing or watching this broadcast illegally is, you know, those messages that we all ignore. The FBI warnings at the beginning of movies. So we're going to hit OK. I mean, I don't watch movies illegally. Um, and then, so this was a small file, so it ran through fairly quickly, and we didn't have it include a report. So I'm going to hide InDesign and go to my package folder here. And now you can see we have, so this is our InDesign file that we saved. And then within this package folder, We have, it includes in that package folder, um, it includes that original. So basically this would be, let me, this package test folder would be what I would compress and send to the client. Um, and then I always keep an original, just, just me, I guess. I always keep an original of the um, of the file just as a separate thing. I know it, it, it's doubled because it's the same exact, this and this are the same exact thing. I know it's kind of a repeat thing. That's just a quirk that I do. Um, I like to have my folder that I'm going to export and send off completely separate from my working files. Um, so you can see it made our our PDF, our low res PDF so that you can see if you do get any font issues or if you do get any issues with, with anything, you can see how it's supposed to look. That's why those previews are always nice. Um, and also if anything is just for whatever reason opening funky when you actually open a file. Um, you know, if this, for whatever reason, if this Y is formatting higher or whatever, whatever goofy reason. Um, then we have our InDesign file, and then our InDesign markup language. And then you have your document fonts, so it included. And then this is just a list. I don't even know if it's going to preview it. No. Um, just a little bit of code about the fonts. Um, and then we have our Century Gothic, our Impact, our Minion Pro fonts that we used in the document. And then it also includes our linked images. So now there's no chance of having linked images. Um, and then you can compress or send or however, depending on, depending on the file size, you can send this folder off on a disk or compress it in a zip file or something like that and send it off to the client. And then now they have everything they need. Um, and there shouldn't be any issues with reproducing this file um, if everything is packaged correctly and there's no issues, no issues in this file. Um, that happened. So now they have all the linked images, they have all the documents, uh, all the document fonts rather, and all of the files that they would need um, to open your InDesign file and um, and print or output as they need.